would take us out. Uh, we go by 2.0 now. Um, 2.0, like many companies, was born from a problem. Um, and it was a problem that I thought I was the only one that had, and then I found out everybody had this problem. I came home on Friday night from work uh, to my lovely girlfriend and would get the same question. What are we doing? Oh, this is not the right side. What are we doing tonight? I hate that question. That question is awful. It means she wants to do something, I need to pick it, and I better not be wrong, right? So that, that starts a conversation that usually goes a little bit like, well, did you have something in mind? And her response is, uh, I'm up for anything. And I say, well, how about let's get some Mexican food? Eh, but not that. And you do that a couple times, and you get frustrated, and you stop. So you go to your friend Google, and you start searching for things to do in Dallas, or things to eat, or things to drink, where to go. You get something from D Magazine, or Yelp, or TripAdvisor, and by the time you're done reading all of those, you're like, I don't want to leave this place anymore. I can't do this. There's too much information. There's too many different options. So you give up. So we decided that we were going to short, short circuit that entire process by simplifying date night. So what Tuo is, is an app and a website that allows you to purchase your date as one whole package. Uh, we send a car to pick you up. It takes you where you're going. You enjoy the whole evening. But you don't know where you're going. We don't tell you, ever. So how does that work? So you order. You pick one of three date types, active, casual, or upscale. Once you pick those types, we send you a confirmation that it says what time you need to be ready and what to wear, because that's actually a big thing to guys. They never know what to wear. What does cocktail casual mean? Somebody tell me that, please. Next, you ride. You get picked up by a car. He knows where you're going. He knows your entire itinerary for the night. You don't have to worry about anything. You get dropped off. You're going to have dinner. Usually that comes first. Our active dates, a lot of times the event comes first. But with dinner, your dinner's already paid for. You get there and you've got a menu that's custom with 2.0 that has no prices on it. You just pick what you want to eat. And there's a couple drink options available. And then you're going to go somewhere else. Car's going to pick you up again. You might ride the trolley. Lots of different options. And you're going to go have fun. Do something entertaining. Don't just sit and eat. There's so many different options in Dallas and everybody thinks the only thing you can do is eat and drink. So. How big is that market? Well, there's about 68 million couples in the US, so that's a lot. Um, more than 80% of them have at least two full date nights a year. So that leaves, right? That's not very good stats. Come on, guys, do better. So that's at least 110 million dates, and your average real date night out is over $110 which leaves a market size of at least 12 billion. But we know that two date nights a year is not very much. There's probably a much bigger market behind that. So we think it's probably closer to 50. How are we gonna get those users? Well, there's quite a few different ways to do it, but for right now, we're not truly focused on growth. We're still learning a little bit about our customers. We're learning how the app experience works. So for right now, we're doing some contests for free dates. Uh, we look for people on Reddit or on Twitter who are like, what's going on in Dallas? What should we do tonight? How are we going to do something romantic? Um, and then we advertise in our partner venues. There is a little bit of a competitive marketplace for us. Uh, Bar Roulette's probably the closest thing. It's an app where you click a button and it tells you, um, or it, it sends an Uber to you and takes you to a random bar that's rated four stars or higher on Yelp. It has no curation, there's no partnership, nothing. It just takes you somewhere random. So we think they're kind of in the same surprise marketplace, but not directly competing with us. There's also Zozi and Head Out, which are pretty similar to each other. They're experience marketplaces. You can buy experience packages, kayaking, things like that. They're not direct competitors either, but they definitely play in the entertainment space. Um, we kind of consider American Express and concierge services equivalent to that to be competitors to us. If you're in a new city, that's a lot of the, a lot of the time user members will call those places. So the founding team, me and my partner, Ajay, uh, we have significant, or I have some pretty significant uh, startup experience. This year, we, I launched um, both Tap Goods as a product manager, as well as AirCheck One as a product manager. And Ajay is a former tech consultant here in the Dallas area. And that's the rest of my presentation. Again. Hey, um, that sounds very cool. Uh, I, I'm not clear, quite sure. Have you launched? Is it available? We so, want to get in on this. Tell so us. in the summer, we started at a startup weekend in 54 hours. We sold two dates before that weekend was over. Uh, so we did have revenue before that weekend was even over. It was a great time. 
Um, and we kind of played with it for a while, to be honest. We ran some more dates. We kind of, you know, talked to restaurants and partners and just played. And they were really successful. People really liked it. And then they started telling some of their friends, and those people started coming for dates, too. Um, and the restaurants were really receptive to us. So we just kept moving forward. And actually, at the middle of December, both Ajay and myself left our full-time jobs to focus on this exclusively. You cannot go on a date today, oh. but you can get on my wait list. Yay. <laughs> oh, well, the wait list part is exciting. Um, so I have a question. So I'm kind of confused as to if I wanted to go on this date, right? Where, so do I pay up front, like when I buy, so is it $110? How much is it, or does it depend on So each? the three date types are active, casual, and upscale. Okay. And they're 150, 200, and 400. Oh, whoa, okay. Yeah. That's, that's so what about a, if that's I'm a girl a on a response. budget? Um, so it's actually kind of interesting. If you do the math on how much you spend on a date night going out, um, dinner, $30 per person, a couple of drinks each, $10 per person, you're over 100 bucks. you have eaten, and you haven't done anything else yet. So it's actually not that hard to go over it. Uh, for example, I got a $25 gift card to AMC and couldn't buy two tickets for a movie, which drove me nuts. Um, but it's not that hard to get to that place. So from our perspective, we actually help people control costs. You know exactly how much you're gonna spend at the beginning of the night, and you don't go over that. Technically, you can leave your wallet at home, uh, oh, other than needing nice your ID. Um, wait, I have another question, though. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, so when, is there an option for peop two people to pay, or is it just one? Right like, now, we have it set up as the one person okay. pays. I, know, um, I mean, we're in the South, it, gentlemen, the, you know. It's, it's actually been asked for. I'm a feminist, for. so I like to ask. <laughs> It's actually been asked for a couple of different times, so we do want to put in split payments. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm a fan. I, though I don't necessarily drink when I go out. So the 100, $150 to $200 price point, like if I'm not drinking and I go out to dinner, my bill is going to be substantially no, lower than someone else's. So I get that I'm not exactly the most attractive client to a restaurant, but... How do you handle something like that? Right now, we just don't, um, oh, <laughs> to be honest with you. Ouch. Uh, we, we've actually had enough, we, we've had enough demand right now that we haven't had to worry about some of those edge cases, or it, not even edge cases, but the markets that we're trying to hit have been very responsive at the price point, and we've been pretty successful with them. So there are goals in the long run to change that part of the market. There's a couple of other things we need to control for too, like some people want a PG date and some people want a rated R date. So there's a lot of different options in there. <laughs> I know, right? Um, kind of along uh, those lines, do you have any like surveys that you send out? Like how do you decide where this date is? Is there any kind of like thing that they fill out at the beginning where it's like, do you like Greek food? Do you hate spicy food? Uh, we ask them if they have any dietary restrictions and what their favorite places that they go are so that we don't send them there. And then at that point, do you tailor a package or is it just, you know, Around generated? those two things, but no, well. we, don't, we don't try and build a tailored package. And the reason is, and we really own this, we think a lot of people know what they like but don't know the other things that they like, so we try and send them somewhere new. I don't want to send you to the same place. You're a rock climber. I'm not sending you to a climbing gym. I want to send you somewhere else. So it's intentional. Um, in the long run, we'll have options to help you narrow it down if you want, though. Have you thought about doing a non-romantic version of this for us single ladies? <laughs> uh, a goal for us would be to API. We don't want to become a dating service. It's not the area that we want to get into, but to allow other dating services to order us. <laughs> Polygamy aside. Uh, Jay, can we make that an option? <laughs> Uh, so there was a company called uh, Tangu, which launched in Canada about three years ago, and they originally started on a very similar business model to what you have. Yep. And then they pivoted off of that because of the Friday Saturday uh, volume problem. So for the busiest restaurants, the best places to hang out for a couple or for a group of friends, they don't have a problem on Friday and Saturday night. There's a wait list, like they're already busy. They don't want to do a partner relationship or discount. So. How have you solved the Tangu problem that they had to pivot off of like three years ago in finding space at places people actually want to go on a weekend? Okay. 